morning. Today, we're going to discuss about the world of returns. Sa topic na ito ay ating matutunghayan kung paano ba pagbibigyan kahulugan ang salitang religion at ang pagtatalakay patungkol sa non-state regionalism at ang mga contemporary challenges to regionalism. Ang halimbawa nito ay ang pagbuo ng mga ASEAN, pagbuo ng mga European Union, ng mga North Atlantic Treaty Organizations at ng iba-iba pa. So, iisa-isahin natin kung bakit kaya nabuo ang mga regions na ito in a midst of the globalization. Well, sa so statement na ito na sinasaad, makikita natin na regionalism is not only talks about political and economic phenomenon. Tama. Sapagkat, so, Maaari din ito masuri sa ating relasyon, sa pagitan ng ating pag identity, sa ating ethics, sa paggawa ng tama mali, sa ecological sustainability, at mismo, mismo, at mismo din sa ating kalusugan. So take note that regionalism is not natural. Why is that natural? Because it is the people who constructed it in order for them to protect and to promote a particular cause which covers to their country and these are the social movements the policy makers and our economic actors so take note that edward mansfield and helen milner states that economic and political definitions of regions vary but there are certain basic features that everyone can agree on so take note natin siguro magkakaroon ng iba't ibang dahilan o pagkakaulugan ang pag sinasabi nating regions but then there is some basic features wherein they agreed on so take note that the first basic feature here talks about the geographical setting and for example asia consists of five regions and in a world we have seven continents and here in the philippines we have 17 regions and these regions organized and regulate wherein the oversee flows and policies choices. So take note that the word regionalizations and regionalism is or should not be interchanged although the first hand it, regionalizations and regionalism focus only to the economic flows until such time there was a political policy or political process characterized by economic policies, cooperation and coordination among countries. So take note that countries respond economically and politically to globalization in various ways. There are some that has a lot of resources and dictate on how they're going to participate in the process of global integration. And for example, here is the China that offers a cheap workforce, um, the, hard, the location of Singapore and Switzerland, and others. So... Countries form regional associations for several reasons, and I have here the list. First is the military defense, second regional organizations of to pool of the resources, regional blocks to protect their independence from pressures of superpower politics, and last is the economic crisis compels countries to come together. So take note that the first reason in forming regional organization is for military defense. Why? The best example for this is the formation of North Atlantic Treaty Organization wherein they agreed together with the United States to protect the Western countries of Europe against the threat of Soviet Union. And with that, the Soviet Union responded by creating a Warsaw Pact together with the Eastern part of Europe but still under the domination of the Soviet Union that that was during the Cold War. So the second reason deals about the resources of these countries and that is the oil. That is why the formation of Organization for Petroleum Exporting Countries has a purpose in dealing the coordination and unified policies in order for them to distribute and to secure stabilization of oil distribution in all over the world. So take note that the third reason here is that they're going or the regional would like to block and protect their independence from the superpower politics. Yes, and that is why they're going to pursue the world peace 
and international cooperation, promoting human rights, their sovereignty, and racial and national equality, and non intervention and peaceful conflict resolution. So take note that the non aligned movement was formed in order to refuse the association to side either from the first capitalist countries in Europe together with the North America and the communist countries in Europe. So take note that the last issue or the reason for forming a regional organization is that the economic crisis compels countries to come together. And the best example for this is when the Tsai economy collapsed in 1996 after the foreign currency speculators and troubled international banks demanded that the, that the Thai government pay back its loans. So the rapid crisis began to spread in Asian countries. That is why the IMF tried to reverse the crisis, however, it is only the ASEAN countries together with China, Japan, and South Korea agreed to establish an emergency fund to anticipate the crisis. So the ASEAN countries together with Japan, China, and South Korea agreed to create an emergency fund in order for them to stabilize the economies in regards to this crisis. And this made ASEAN more unified and coordinated. So, dumako na tayo ngayon sa pagtatalakay patungkol sa non-state regionalism. So, sinasabi dito na when you say about regionalism, hindi lamang ito nagtatalakay patungkol sa pangunang layunin ng isang bansa o ng isang estado o nasyon. Maaaring itong tumutukoy sa pangunahing layunin mismo ng isang community o ng isang komunidad. And this new regionalism varies in form. They can be tiny association that include no more than few actors and focus on a single issues. What, what, ano itong mga single issues na to? It could either be about the poverty, about social change, and others and identify with reformers who share the same values, norms, institution, and system that exist outside of the traditional establishment mainstream institutions of the system. To continue, their strategies and tactics likewise vary. Some organizations partners with governments to initiate social change. So ito yung pakikibaka ng mga organisasyon ito or the non-state regionalism na kung saan mayroon silang layunin na maaaring magbago sa ating society. And those who work with governments participate in institutional mechanism that afford some civil groups voice until its influence technocratic policies making processes. And for the example, for this non-state regionalism or hemispheric social alliances opposition, North Atlantic Free Trade Agreement, Round Table of National Associations and Networks and NGOs of Latin America and the Caribbean and Organizations of American States. So, they're going to participate in forum, summits, and dialogues with the presidents and ministers. Likewise, the group of called the Citizens Diplomas Diplomacy Forum tries to influence the policies and programs of organizations of America. So here in Asia, we have ASEAN Parliamentarians for Human Rights and they're going to push through to prevent discrimination, uphold political freedom, and promote democracy until such time the human rights throughout the region will spread. So dumako naman tayo ngayon sa South America wherein other regional organizations dictate or dedicate themselves to spread a specialized cause. And the best example for this is the Rainforest Foundation to protect the indigenous peoples and the rainforest in Brazil, Guyana, Panama, and Peru. So dito, ang kanilang single cause only is to promote and to have an advocacy to preserve the Amazon rainforest. And other countries, or there are some several organizations dedicate themselves for a specialized causes. And for the best example of this is the Rainforest Foundation, wherein they are promoting indigenous peoples who are in this area and the Amazon rainforest that located in Brazil, Guyana, Panama, and Peru. So, hindi natin masusukat kung ano man ang mismong layunin meron ang bawat na asosasyon ito. As long as they have the specialized cost na maaaring magkaroon ng poses and maaaring marinig ng bawat mamamayan. 
So another here is that young Christians across Asia, Africa, the Middle East, the Americas, and the Caribbean formed regional interfaith youth networks to promote conflict prevention, resolution of peace and education, and sustainable development. So another is that the Migrant Forum in Asia is another regional network of non-governmental organizations and trade unions committed to protect and promote the rights and welfare of migrant workers. Sino sino itong mga migrant workers natin? Ito at mga OFWs na nagtatrabaho sa ibang bansa. At dahil dito ay sinusulong nila na magkaroon ng karapatan o welfare of migrant workers. So take note that the new regionalism differs significantly from traditional state-to-state -state regionalism when it comes to identifying problems. For example, state treat poverty of, or economic environmental liquidation as technical or economic issues. And with that, it can be resolved by refining existing programs of state agencies, making minor changes in economic policies, and creating new offices that address these issues. However, new forum or new Regionalism advocates such as the NGO Global Forum see these issues as a reflection of flawed economic development and environmental models. They mean that economic development plans that are market-based, profit-driven, and hardly concerned with social welfare, especially among the poor. So, sino mismo ang nagdudulot o nag ang nakaapekto dito is yung mga, mga mahihirap so another challenge to this or for the new regionalists is the discord that may emerge among them. For example, magtalakay tayo about gender and religion. When it's about gender, may other countries na hindi panig sa LGBT community or hindi nila tinatanggap ang mga ito. Na kung saan there are some also countries that are accepting this type of social change. And with regards to religion, may iba't iba tayong paniniwala na kung saan may, mayroon tayong sariling paniniwala, especially sa mga Christians, sa mga Buddhists, sa mga Hindus, or sa mga Muslims mismo. So dahil dito, nagkakaroon ng pagkakaiba o nagkakaroon ng challenge with regards to the new regionalist. So this time, we're going to discuss about the contemporary challenge to regionalism. And the first to this is the resurgence of militant nationalism and populism. And for example, is the refusal of to dismantle NATO after the collapse of the Soviet Union. And as we come mismo, the basis of anti-NATO rhetoric of Vladimir Putin in Russia. Now, even the relationship of the United States, the alliance core member with NATO has become problematic after Donald Trump demonized the organization in a simply leeching of American military power without giving anything in return. The second problem here is that perhaps the most crisis ridden regional organization of today is the European Union. The continuing financial crisis over the region is forcing countries like Greece to consider forcing or consider leaving the Union to gain more flexibility in their economic policy. And with that, the anti-immigrant sentimental and the populist campaign against Europe have already led to the United Kingdom voting to leave the European Union in move the media has termed the Brexit. So, the third contemporary challenge is that ASEAN countries continue to disagree over the extent to which member countries should sacrifice their sovereignty for the sake of regional stability. And with that, the association's link with East Asia has also been problematic. Recently, ASEAN's countries also disagreed over how to relate to China, with the Philippines unable to get to other countries to support its condemnations of China's occupation of the West Philippine Sea. To continue, when some formerly authoritarian countries democratize, this participatory regionalism clash with ASEAN policies of non-interference as the mandate that the other countries democratize adopt a more attitude towards foreign criticism. And for the last, differing visions of what regionalism should be for. 
In Western governments, they see regional organization not simply as economic formation, but also an instrument for political democratization. However, in the non-Western and developing societies may have different view or ways of viewing it regarding globalization, development, and democracy. So for the conclusions, official regional association now cover best what's of the world. Formation of Asia-Pacific Economic Council, wherein these countries are also part of smaller organizations such as ASEAN, Shanghai Corporation Organization, NAFTA, the Caribbean and Pacific Group of States, and Union of South American Nations. Even the isolationist, the North Korea, is a part of the regional forum. So even the UK leaves the European Union, it must continue to trade with its immediate neighbors and will therefore be forced to implement many European rules. So take note natin na sa kabuuan pagtatalakay dito, hindi lamang maaari makabuo ng isang region dahil lamang na tatangi ito sa kanilang geographical na lokasyon. It could either be again in a way of political and economical phenomenon or in atin mismo na intindihan kung bakit kaya napubuo yung mga NATO, yung mga ASEAN, yung mga Rainforest Foundations, yung mga migrant organizations na kung saan mayroon silang mismo ang itinatpaguyod na sariling cause o sariling layunin in order to promote and to have what do we call this the social change, I hope. So I hope na intindihan ninyo kung paano ako magtalakay dito though it is only just a shallow explanation but then again it's up to you to go and to search for more informations in order for you to learn more thank you